Dibley Dare look. This is a uh, nearly a 12 hour print. We're five hours into it, 40%. Unfortunately, it's black PLA. That's my last reel of PLA from my stock. I have to order some more. We'll have a look in the morning, see what's happened. Good morning, guys. Left this printing last night. A little bit stringy, so I think I've got the um, PLA too hot. But other than that, it looks like we've printed the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to have to use that to get it off because I've glued it. Put um, Elmer's glue on the bed to make sure it stuck down and it's stuck down very well so I can't do that with one hand but it's another fan driven rubber band powered car almost the same as the previous one I did the idea is to keep it in one small print all in one made a bigger fan this time. Let's see if we can put it together. A uh, quick recap on what we've got. Got the 3D printed parts. Got a bicycle spoke for the axle. And I've got this galvanized garden wire which I'm going to use the shaft that goes through the um, fan blade. I think this is one millimeter or something, or maybe 1.5 millimeter. It's relatively soft, so I can bend it fairly easy. Easier than trying to bend a bicycle spoke. Oh, we've got some CDs. That'll do for the wheels. That's the bit of wire that I've cut already. These are the hubs for the CDs. I think I had the printer set a little bit hot because it's quite a few little stringy bits linking all the bits together where he shouldn't be. I don't think that'll be a problem. Okay, that's about right. I need to try and straighten that up a bit. Ideally, you'd use a straight bit of wire to begin with, but just have to work on this. Okay, that looks okay. And that's got to go through there. And then we wind it up. In fact, we wind it up that way around. And then it will spin that way because we want it to be a pusher. I've cleaned out the holes so they're a better fit now. I've also run the drill through there to make them a better fit. So these go through there and they do actually grip, but you might want to put glue on them just to make sure they don't slip. This end, we've got a bit of a ratchet effect. So 
when we fold this at right angles, So in one direction it grips, and in theory, when it goes loose the other way, it could freewheel. That way it grips, and that way it freewheels. So we want that, and then we want to bend a suitable shape on here, sort of a, a diamond shape. Okay, so the rubber band can go over there. Got some Poundland rubber bands. Probably want more than that, but we'll just test it. So, what did I say? I've got to wind it up that way around. So, I want it to go that way here. Yeah. Could just keep going and see how many turns it can take before it snaps. Not generating a lot of power there, but it, it did freewheel at the end. CDs on the hubs, hubs on the axles. I've got them that way round because you've got a smaller area there to rub against the bodywork, which will reduce the friction. If you have them the other way round, you have a bigger area rubbing against the bodywork. I mean, they shouldn't be rubbing against the bodywork anyway, but if they do, it's better to have a, a smaller area so that they run freely. Okay. That'll be a hundred and something. Now freewheeling. I do believe it's going to go all the way. Is that just going to stop? Yeah, just going to stop. Right, we'll see if we can hit the camera. I'll wind it up a little bit further, somewhere between 150 and 200 turns for those rubber bands. I could always double up on the rubber bands and get more power. Summary time. Well, it works. We're doing about eight meters there with fairly thin rubber bands. The second run I did, I doubled up on the rubber bands, and it's um, where the rubber bands were unwinding, they were doing this, and that was setting up quite a lot of vibration. It was actually bouncing up and down. So that meant 
it wastes a lot of its power doing things it shouldn't have been doing instead of going forwards. I could have added weight. Weight would have stopped it bouncing up and down so easy. So that might be the answer. But all I did was took the second um, string of rubber bands off, went back to what we had originally, wound it up carefully and gave it about 180 turns. And that was enough to do the distance. The, um, the fan is a little bit wobbly. So that also contributes to the vibrations. But it worked. Certainly worked better than version one. A couple of things that I would change. At this end, there is the chance of the rubber band rubbing against the front axle, which will be acting as a brake and slowing it down. So it would be better here, probably, to just have a peg sticking up and tie the rubber band on the peg rather than going through that hole there. So I think I said that on the previous version as well. So instead of having a little slot there for the rubber band to go through, 3D print it with a little peg sticking up that you can hook the rubber band onto. The only problem with a 3D printed peg sticking up is it'll probably snap if you use too much power because the layers will be going crossways, which means the peg will be weak and it can be snapped quite easily. But it works, so we'll count that one as a success. If you want the files for it, you better comment, put a note in the comment asking for them. At the moment, they're just on Tinkercad. But I could put them on Thingiverse and Colts is the other one. C-U-L-T-S, Colts. That's the other one I use. That's it. Job done.